I came to Canada in 1998 uh, from the former Yugoslavia after the war in the country. Um, I was a science teacher and came here with my family, my husband and two sons. When I came, I knew only two people uh, in Canada and um, it was exciting at first and then it uh, became challenging. The challenges for me for being an immigrant was not having any friends at all and being isolated and bullied all the time and also I couldn't express myself to my teachers. Because of the language barrier and cultural shocks, I feel like I have no idea. If I cannot understand what people say, I cannot, I just feel like embarrassed and I have no idea. Sometimes if people would say something I would, wouldn't understand, I would just smile. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> a social integration was one of the biggest challenges and um, I came across people who did not have the understanding uh, what I was going through at that time. It was difficult. It was like uh, not being myself. It was uh, like being in a limbo, you know, between two worlds. We've been dealing it with it for, as indigenous, been dealing with it for hundreds and hundreds of years and so for them to come into another country they're experiencing the same type of uh, whether it be discrimination or racism there is definitely a relationship in between that for those that are let's say refugee or uh, new Canadians like they have a very unique experience of also navigating a whole new world like uh, for, for them uh, as well as it is for those that have been impacted over generations by the effects of colonization. We can relate. Like there is a, there definitely a relationship in between them. You know, when I started my PhD research, I was exploring experiences of refugee women teachers from the former Yugoslavia. And uh, when I talked about those stories, uh, one of my colleagues told me like, I don't think people will trust your experience and your struggle. And I was really kind of disappointed by that. But then I was thinking, okay, I'm getting this PhD. After my research is done, it's not only my story. It's those other women's stories. For me, it was also info important to share those stories. So Shnezna came to me and she had um, talked about a thesis that she had worked on and so she asked me if there were ways that, that I knew of of bringing a thesis to life. Okay, first tableau. Nice slow transition. And hold the pose, very nice. Four, three, two, one, transition. So I suggested play building. I also suggested dramatic approaches, and we agreed on play building. It's a process where everybody is included. We will start with a mentor text or something that will really inspire us. And what we'll do is, um, sometimes we'll do some um, free writes about it. And then I start to add drama techniques. For example, there's a, a technique called verb chains. And um, so you take a, a process. It could be um, chopping vegetables, making a salad. So we actually use brushing your teeth. Something is squeezing you. Something is squeezing you in. It's like they just spit you out. What happens with your body when you get spit out? Thinking about, you know, brushing your teeth, we thought about the verbs that could happen, you know, like swish and getting spat out. And then what we did was we layered it, this movement we've created, sequence of movements, to a poem that has to do with coming to Canada and being an immigrant. And then you layer that with music um, and you start to evoke feelings in the audience. First, there was the time of watching. They are watching me. 
we are watching too. I will protect you. So when, when I was thinking about it musically, I was viewing it in that way that how is this something that is a storyline, a different kind of voice that underscores what's happening in terms of the, whether it's the movement or the action or the direction, uh, the, the poetry, uh, that they could all sort of come together in that way. And so then we started putting it onto the stage and then Catherine and Toria, they said it connected with the two row wampum belt. Well, the two row wampum belt is a symbol um, used by the indigenous peoples on Turtle Island of an understanding of a relationship between the settlers, uh, realizing that the two of them are to ride uh, in their boats, one being a canoe and the other one being a ship, but neither one being ahead of the other. Uh, neither one doing things without uh, uh, letting the other side know as well. Mm -hmm. So then we started to create that with the fabric on the floor and then we started to have um, Indigenous people welcoming the newcomers. And so um, part of the play became we need to warn um, newcomers that you might lose your culture, you might lose your, your language. You know, we, uh, we, it was forced out of us. Yeah. And, and it's not what we wanted, but that's where we are today, trying to, struggling to get it back. And so we became those voices in the audience, I think, that were warning and saying, you know, watch, 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 you don't want to lose your language, you don't want to lose your culture, you don't want to lose that sense of who, who you are. I joined the project because I think that the arts transcend a lot of the scholarly sort of academic kind of feeling of research sometimes that people are intimidated by and I think it gives people a chance to express their freedom and, and their voice. I think also uh, the idea of like community storytelling like um, people can have very distinct experiences but at the same time they can be um, unique as well. Even we have some arguments because we have we're, diff we're persons and we have from the different cultures, but still we are friendly, we respect each other. The team, the people coming together, working together. From the rehearsals, uh, you know, until the last performance, the final performance, we were, we were very enthusiastic. It shows great hope and, you know, in the future. Everything about the play, play is, is a mem memorable memory for me. I really still cherish it.